Let's talk about Rainbird's irrigation valve called the DV. Also has a DVF, which is the flow control model. But these come in three quarter inch and one inch for the DV. And this is a super solid valve. You'll see these everywhere. You know, if Rainbird is sold in your market, very ubiquitous. I mean, there's thousands upon thousands of these out here in the field. They're super solid. Occasionally you'll have to rebuild them just like any other valve. But you know, three, uh, three quarter inch, one inch version. And what I have here in my hand is a, a female by female inlet uh, threads on this one, but you can also get it with a slip inlet on the female. You can also get a, um, a male inlet by barb. You can get this in an angle valve, meaning that the there's an inlet on the bottom, right, which is, helps you save just a couple of PSI of pressure loss on this. You know, uh, I mentioned before, this is a non-flow control. You can get it with a flow control. And you can also get this in an anti-siphon valve configuration. And for the threaded models, you can get that in BSP threads, which is the European standard. What I have here is NPT, National Pipe Thread, which is the American standard for threads. But um, let's talk about some of the specifications for it. The, the pressure range on it is from 15 to 150 PSI at the inlet. The flow range on it for the three quarter inch is 0.2 gallons per minute through 22 gallons per minute. And the one inch that I have here is 0.2 through 40 gallons per minute. And that's considered, you know, low flow. And that's something to watch out for. A whole lot of valves don't really accept that low of a flow on the inlet. Um, sometimes the, the diaphragm won't open. So that makes this a, a good valve to use with uh, low flow drip systems. I said some valves just won't even operate at all. Sometimes the, the diaphragm will chatter or just, you know, bounce open and close on it. So let's talk about the solenoid. There's, there's a range when you're checking out the solenoid to see if it's healthy, if you're doing troubleshooting on it. You can find a range of resistance on this. I measured this one and some other ones I had on my truck, and they all kind of fell between 30 and 35 ohms. The literature says, you know, one place in Rainbird literature I found, it said 38 ohms. And on the website, it says 42 to 55 ohms. And in the past, when I've measured these in the field, I've, you know, 55 is relatively common to find on this. And the, you know, the, the inrush amperage on this, which is the amount of electricity it takes to open it up, is 450 milliamps. And the holding amperage is 250 milliamps. So let's talk about the body here. Um, this is a, an internal bleed. On the bonnet, we have six screws that are Phillips head only. Okay, this will accept a DC latching solenoid, which means you can use it with Rainbird, or even you could use any of the other 12 volt battery operated timers. You know, meaning that if you don't have 120 volt, you know, to, to 24 volt low voltage timer, which is a standard electrical timer on this, you know, you could put this way out. As long as you've got water, you can put a battery operated timer on here with a DC latching solenoid. And what happens with the DC latching solenoid is that in order to not run the batteries down, the timer sends one pulse. It opens the solenoid, and then when it's time to close it, it sends another pulse to close it versus a regular solenoid, which is held open the entire time by electricity. But since we're using batteries in that case, it's called a latching solenoid because it latches open and then latches back closed. Okay, so also what we have here is... Um, a couple of limitations on this particular model. You know, Rainbird makes a, an optional external pressure regulator that you can put on here. And pressure regulation is different from flow control. Flow control is actually that 
and it will, you know, when you run the flow control down, it squeezes the amount of water off it. It's actually putting pressure on the diaphragm and not allowing it to open all the way. But if you use the optional pressure regulation, it's kind of a different mechanism. The DV will not accept Rainbird's pressure regulator, and you can't use the DV for two wire systems either. But let's break this down and talk about rebuilding it. Okay, let's go ahead and break down this DV100. Now, if you're using a screwdriver, it's not a problem, but if you're using a, you know, a power device like I'm using here, it may be better to go ahead and take this solenoid off of it because the screws are pretty close and it's a little bit difficult to get in there with a, you know, a powered nut drive or something like that. So, let's take these screws out. Take this one apart here and as we look here you know the the top the bonnet piece here is a really simple construction if you're just rebuilding it you know and just putting the uh, original parts back on just inspect the the little pilot hole here for the solenoid is very very small on this one so just inspect it make sure that there's nothing down in there and as we take the diaphragm off here this one kind of lifts up easily. This is a, a brand new valve here, but let's take a look. The spring is kind of captured on here by a raised post on the middle of the diaphragm. And if you'll notice, there's two holes here that fit on two raised posts right here beside the, the pilot hole for the solenoid uh, actuation. So it's really easy to get right when you're putting it back together. I mean, there shouldn't be any confusion whatsoever. And just take a look here on the bottom if you're putting the original parts back in, if you're just cleaning it out, that this is a little little tiny filter on here that's, that helps. Like there's actually two filters in the DV, one here, and then there's you know, the piece here that's the encapsulator for the solenoid plunger is actually a little bit of a filter itself. So, you know, just check it, clean this out. I always usually have a, a, a cup of water and a toothbrush on hand to clean this out. I mean, if you're doing this in the field, you know, in a dirty situation, you're always going to get a little bit of dirt back on here. So when I get ready to put it back together, I always flush this out, wash off the diaphragm if I'm putting the original. And even if I'm putting new parts in there, I make sure I just kind of wash everything off and make sure that there's no little pieces of plastic or anything that might hold this open or cause a leak. We're going to check down inside here and make sure there's no debris or gravel or anything there or chunks of PVC that's down inside of here. You can stick your finger down in there and just make sure that there's nothing that's causing the problem. We're going to put this back together. I'm going to put those two holes back over their little posts. And with this diaphragm, you got to go with your finger around it and make sure that it seats back down in there because you kind of feel it catch as it seats back into its little lip there, okay? And obviously our spring is still there and we're going to set this back down on there and just gently push it straight down on there. And the thing is on this one, uh, on other valves, it's, you know, kind of hard to get it out of a line, but on this one, you have to just make sure that you're putting this down here in the right place. I mean, the, the screws are going to line it back up, but it's a lot better if you put it back down and you're pressing straight down on it versus trying to, to move it around or spin it around, which may cause the diaphragm to come unseated. So let's put this back together. And when I'm putting this together on this one, I really hold it together, you know, almost all of them. I hold it with my fingers to make sure that it doesn't come out or let anything get back up underneath the bonnet as I'm putting it back together. And 
And now if we were had to, you know, if we were rebuilding it in the field, I'd probably take some more water and just make sure I flush this out before I put this back on. You know, on this one, there's a little bit of a um, an O-ring around here, so you'd want to inspect this and always be careful. You know, on this one, it's not such a big deal, but on other valves, when you thread this back in here, on some valves, it's easy to cross thread, and especially if you're hanging upside down in a valve pit or something, rebuilding these, just take your time and make sure that everything goes on good and you're not stripping out any of the plastic threads. And there we go.